to you by Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. What a pair. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. Chesterfield regular. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> He's got here, Quaid. Fellow with all his money can afford a nice house, Mitch. He is. Coming out of the barn. Let's go have a little talk with him. <laughs> he ain't a very big fella. We shouldn't have much trouble. Nah. Oh, hello there. Uh, get down and rest a while, man. I'll get down. You stay mounted, Mitch. Right, Quaid. Well, why don't you both get down? I uh, got a pot of coffee on the stove in there, and uh, I might scare up a little bacon if you're real empty. We bet. We camped in them cottonwoods out there last night. Well, you did? Well, uh, why didn't you ride in? I could have slept you in the barn. I don't get much company out here. I know. We've been watching the place. You're all alone here, ain't you? I've always been all alone. O.B. Tater, huh? O.B. Tater, that's right, mister. But, uh, how come you knowed my name? Well, everybody has heard of you, O.B. man that spends money the way you do gets kind of famous like. Oh, I don't spend money no more. That was uh, when I first come here. Oh, I'm broke now. Well, that ain't the way we heard it, O.B., we heard you drove a mule back from Sacramento, plumb loaded with gold double eagles. Oh, that ain't so. A thousand dollars is all the gold I scratched out of California. And I spent it building this ranch. Sure don't know why people keep talking about how rich I am. They'll quit talking soon enough, O.B. Huh? You ain't gonna be rich no more. <laughs> no, you sure ain't. What are you talking about? I'm gonna ask you real nice, O.B., where you got that gold hid? Now, wait a minute. What are you fellas up to? You gonna tell us? You come here to rob me, didn't you? Well, it ain't no use. There's nothing to rob. I told you you wouldn't talk, Quade. We'll have to bounce it out of him. Go ahead, Mitch. Take down your rope. No. I ain't even armed. You can't hang me. We ain't gonna hang you, O.B. We're just gonna give you a little ride, feet first. Go on, Mitch. Rope him. No! Don't put that rope away. You ain't gonna drag me. Yes, we are, Obi. That's uh, just what we're no. gonna do. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, looky there. It's Obi Tater. Oh, Chester, uh, Marshal Dillon. How are you, Obi? Now, what brings you into Dodge? Well, uh, I had to see Doc Adams, Marshal. Well, you are kind of peaked looking, Obi. You been sick? Well, I ain't been sick. I've been hurt. Hurt? Well, what happened, Obi? Uh, three weeks ago, Marshal. I like to died. What'd you do? Did you fall off a horse or something? No, I didn't. I got drug. What? Well, two fellas, they come by my place and they throwed a rope on me and they drug me across the prairie. Well, who did? What for? Well, I never seen him before, Marshal, but uh, 
Uh, one was called Mitch and uh, the other Quaid. That's all I know about them. Well, I never heard of no Mitch nor Quaid around here. Well, why did they do it, Obie? Well, Marshal, you know how everybody thinks I come back from California with a lot of gold double eagles, and, and they say I'm rich. Oh, it ain't true, of course, but that don't stop them. They just go right on saying it. Yeah, I've heard the talk. So these two fellas, they wanted to rob me. I told them and I told them that I don't have no gold money, but they wouldn't believe me. That's a wonder they didn't kill you, Obie. Oh, they pretty near did, Marshal. I felt awful when we got through. Do you think they'll come back? They said they wasn't done with me yet. They said uh, they'd find a way to open me up. It's a terrible thing, Marshal, being treated like that for no reason at all. And especially when you ain't even uh, got no gold money. Well, it's too bad the rumor got started in the first place, Obi. I've tried to stop it, but you know how I am. I ain't very smart. I can't hardly sign my name, Marshal. Guess that's why I've always got a job by any fast talker that comes along. Uh, all my life it's been like that. Well, we can't stop what people think, Obi, but maybe we can find those two men. Do you think you'd recognize them? Yes, I sure would, Marshal. Okay. They just might be hanging around Dodge. Let's go look the town over, Obi. <laughs> Almost 100 years ago, Charles Kingsley wrote that tobacco is a lone man's companion, a bachelor's friend, a hungry man's food, a sad man's cordial, a wakeful man's sleep, and a chilly man's fire. These words describe what Chesterfield means to millions of smokers today. All of us smoke for relaxation, for comfort, for satisfaction, and in the whole wide world. No cigarette satisfies like a Chesterfield. Only Chesterfield has the right combination of the world's best tobaccos. Highest in quality, low in nicotine. Best for you. Buy them king size at the new low price or regular. Get a carton of Chesterfield today. Marshal Dillon, we must have been in every saloon and gambling house in Dodge. I'm getting foot sore. Well, there are only a couple more, Obi. We'll try the Texas Trail here next. Well, what are you going to do if we find them, Marshal? Put them in jail? Well, if there's enough left of them when I get through. Now, here we are. Okay, take a good look around, Obi. Uh, uh, they ain't at the bar. And, uh... They ain't at the tables back there. Hey, couldn't we sit down a minute, Marshal? I'm awful tired. I guess I ain't got my full strength back yet. Sure, Obie, we can sit down. Oh, let's go over there with Kitty and whoever that other girl is. Huh? Oh, I'd like that, Marshal. I ain't heard a woman's voice in over half a year. Hello, Matt. Hello, Kitty. Oh, Kitty, this is uh, Obie Tater. Glad to know you, Obie. Ma'am? It's Miss Obie. And the same with Ella Mellish here. And this is Marshal Dillon. How do you do, ma'am? How do you do? I'm oh, glad to know you. Oh, sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Uh, uh, that's an awful pretty name, uh, Ella Mellish. <laughs> Thank you, Obie. Ella's new here. She's only been in Dodge about a week. I like it, though. I might even stay a while. Oh. Oh, well, that'd be nice. Sure hope you do, Ella. Well, it depends. Depends on what? Oh, people, I suppose. If I meet somebody I like, I'll stay. <laughs> you will? Sure. Why not? Well, you meet somebody. <laughs> Pretty girl like you. <laughs> You're nice, Obie. By the way, how are you feeling now? Oh, I'm fine. 
Doc Adams couldn't find nothing real wrong. He just said to take it easy for a while. What's the trouble, Obi? You been sick? No, it's it's not that. Couple of <clears throat> couple of fellas come by my place and they treat me kind of rough. I'm okay now. You look fine, Obi. You can't hit a young man like you anyway. Oh, I ain't I ain't very young no more. Not pushing sixty, I. Sixty? Oh, I don't believe it. Well, you look more like thirty-five to me. I do? Well, of course you do. <clears throat> uh, Ella. Yes? Yeah? I'd be proud to take you over to the bar and buy you a drink. Any kind of a drink you want. Uh, uh wait a minute now, Obi. We got a couple of more places to look at. No, that can wait, Marshal. It ain't important. We'll do that tomorrow sometime. Oh, will you, Ella? Come on, will you come? Oh, I'd love to, Obi. And maybe you'll tell me about yourself. Out in California and all. Oh, that ain't nothing. I, I'd rather hear about you and how you come to Dodge. <laughs> Well, that sure didn't take long. Ella Mellish, huh? What do you know about her, Kitty? I don't know anything, Matt. Not really. I was a good talker, but she doesn't say much about herself. Did she come here alone? As far as I know, she did. Yeah. Did she have any friends here? I mean, have you seen her with anyone in particular? No. I don't pay much attention to her. Why, Matt? Something wrong? No, not yet, Kitty. But, uh... There's sure gonna be. Oh, good morning, Matt. Hello, Doc. Come on in. Oh, well, thank you. You found O.B. Tater yet? No, uh, not yet, Doc, but Chester's out looking for him again. Well, maybe you haven't tried the right places, man. Oh, we've looked everywhere, Doc. And that Ella Mellish just plain disappeared, both of them. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. They'll be back. Well, I hope so. Now, this is the second day they've been gone. I tried to talk to Obey that first night, but he was acting like a man in a dream. Oh, love's dream, Matt. Love's sweet young dream. <laughs> Doc, Obi Tater will never see 60 again. Oh, age has nothing to do with him. <laughs> I'm surprised that you don't understand these matters. Oh, why should I? I can always come ask you about him. Any time, Matt, any time. Be glad to advise you. There's many a pitfall I might save you from, too, if you come to me in time. <laughs> and you may consider me like a father. <clears throat> like a father, huh? Certainly. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Doc. Yes, the benefit of my experience is yours, Matt. Just any time. Good, good. Tell me, Doc. How does a man get out of New Orleans with two different husbands gunning for him? Two husbands gunning for him? Why, it's uh, out of New Orleans, too. Huh? Oh, my goodness, I, I must have been drunk. When did I tell you about that? The same night you told me about how you come to leave Philadelphia. Philadelphia? Oh, I did? Oh, well, that happened long. Oh, a long time ago. I, and I don't appreciate your remembering that, either. Here he is, Mr. Dillon. What? I found him. Come on in, Obi. Obi, teacher, what... It's about time you showed up again. Well, what's all the fuss about? You think I was a criminal or something? We've been worried about you, Obi. Where you been? Honeymooning. What? Honeymooning. At the Dodge house. I paid the clerk ten dollars not to tell nobody we was there. I think it's what love all the time. You mean you married Ella Mellish? It was love at first sight, Marshal. I proposed to make her my wife, and I am proud to say... She accepted me right off. I never thought you'd go that far. She's a fine girl, Marshal, a fine girl. Is she, Obi? Well, I hate to say anything against your wife, but there's something I gotta tell you. You're jealous, Marshal. That's what you are. Yeah, shame on you. Obi, if I'd known you were gonna do this, I'd have made you listen to me the other night. Well, say it out, Marshal. I gotta get back to my bride. We're leaving for the ranch today. Well, I'm half tempted to let you find out for yourself. Well, find out what? What, uh, what are you talking about? Don't you remember the other night when you first met Ella Mellish, how she asked you if you were feeling okay again? Now, ain't that just like Ella? Always considering other people, me in particular, I'm happy to say. Well, while you're feeling so happy, tell me something. How come she knew you'd been hurt? Huh? You came here straight from Doc's that day, and nobody knew anything about what had happened to you except Doc and Chester and me. Now, who told Ella Mellish? Well, I don't know what difference does it make. Oh, Obi, listen to me, there's... There's something wrong with Ella. I don't know for sure she's in with those fellows, Mitch and Quaid, but if she isn't, she's got explaining to do. Marshal Dillon, Ella Mellish is now Mrs. O.B. Tater. And she don't have to explain nothing to nobody. Oh, I give up. She's a fine woman, Marshal. 
And I won't stand for no talk again. Her. Love's sweet young dream, huh, Doc? It's like being a loco, Matt. He can't hear you or anybody else. Except that girl. Now, that's no way to talk about me. I thought you were my friend. We are your friends. Not anymore, you're not. You or Doc or Chester or nobody. Well, I got me a wife now, and I don't need you. You'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But I hope it isn't too late when we do, Ovi. And I hope you're still alive to see, too. I didn't know how Ella Mellish planned to do it, but she was a clever girl. And I was sure she had some way in mind to handle Obi Tater. What she didn't know, of course, was that he didn't have any money. And that she was wasting her talents on him. And I was afraid that when she failed, Mitch and Quaid had come back and... Well, this time they'd kill Obi. He was still alive about a week later, however, when Chester and I happened to be in the country not far from his ranch... And rode over to have a look. They're at home, all right, Mr. Dillon. My gracious, they must be roasting a calf with all that smoke coming out of the chimney. Wait a minute, Chester. Huh? Watch that smoke a minute. What? Now just watch it. Now, there, there, you see? Why, it's puffing. It's starting and stopping every now and again. Yeah. Well, maybe his chimney's got something stuffed up in it. Maybe. You know, if you couldn't see the house, you'd think it was Indian signaling. Uh, you stop now. Let's leave our horses here, huh, Chester? Yes, yeah, sir. Now, Chester, when we get inside, don't say anything about how that smoke looked. You mean you think it was a signal, Mr. Dillon? Well, we'll see. Hello? Anybody home? Who is it? Oh, is that you, Ella? Marshal Dillon, what are you doing out here? Oh, we were nearby, so we thought we'd stop and say hello. Well, that's fine, Marshal. But I can't ask you, and I'm busy cleaning house. Oh? You'd better come back some other time. I'd love to see you then. Oh, uh, sure. Sure. Um, where's Obi? Obi? Oh, he went off somewhere this morning. I don't expect him back till late. Next time, Marshal, you come see us next time. I'll cook you dinner or something. Oh, that's okay, Ella. Well, we'll see you another time. Sure. You do that, Marshal. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come on, Chester. Well, I declare, Mr. Dillon, I never got treated like that in my whole life. Not by nobody. Uh, she wasn't expecting us, Chester. Had her upset. I don't care. That's no excuse for not even offering a man a cup of coffee. Uh, she didn't want us in the house. Yeah. In fact, I don't think she wants us anywhere around here. And, uh, hey, where are we going? Well, I want to take a look in the barn. And if Obi isn't out here, we're going back to the house. Well, but Ella said he took off for somewhere this morning. Ella was kind of nervous, Chester. Maybe she didn't mean it. Ah, here we are. Hmm. Obi. Obi Tater. Stand right where what? you are. Don't move, either of you. Hey, he's got a shotgun. It's Marshal Dillon, Obi, and Chester. Oh. Sorry, Marshal. I couldn't see it first. I was in the back there, and I heard the door open, and I seen two men stand here. Can't blame me for being jumpy. That's all right, Obi. But what are you doing in here? Ella told us you weren't around. Ella told us. Well, Ella does a lot of talking these days. Well, what is it, Obi? Something wrong between you two? Something wrong. Marshal Dillon, I owe you an apology. What for? For... Not listening to you back in Dodge. You was right about the whole thing. All that woman married me for was my gold money. And I've told her and I've told her I ain't got none, but she won't listen. All her talk won't hurt you, Obi. But there's something else that might. Well, she does more than talk, Marshal. The woman's a devil, that's what she is. Oh, well, what do you mean, what she's been doing? 
Well, she won't feed me for one thing. She won't even boil my coffee. It started the first night we got here, Marshal. As soon as I show her my gold money, she says she'll be a good wife. I tried to tell her the place is hers, what she need money for, even if I had it. Well, for land's sake, I never heard of a wife that wouldn't cook for a man. Oh, that ain't all, Chester. Where do you think I've been sleeping? Out here in the barn, that's where. Can't even sleep in my own house. She says she'll run off into the prairie if I come anywhere near. Well, of all the... Obi, if a woman done that in Texas, you'd have a right to give her back. I don't want to give her back. She's so darn pretty. And besides, there's something else. She ain't going to, to devil me no more. What? After tonight, she said. She said, after tonight, it's all over. She said she won't give me no more trouble. After tonight, huh? That's what she said, Marshal. Chester. Yes, sir? Go get our horses and bring them into the barn where they can't be seen, huh? And when you get back, you and Obi and I are going to go into the house and sit down and wait for tonight. <laughs> There are more than 60 million cigarette smokers in America who smoke many brands. In choosing your cigarette, be sure to remember this. You'll like Chesterfield best because only Chesterfield has the right combination of the world's best tobaccos. Highest in quality, low in nicotine. Best for you. All of us smoke for relaxation, for comfort, for satisfaction. And in the whole wide world, no cigarette satisfies like a Chesterfield. Yes, you'll get the greatest possible pleasure from a cigarette when you choose Chesterfield, the right combination of the world's best tobaccos. Highest in quality, low in nicotine. Therefore, best for you. Buy them king size at the new low price or regular. Get a carton of Chesterfields today. Down, Ella, you just wear yourself out walking around that way. I got nothing to do with this, I tell you. I never heard of Mitch McQuaid. Then you shouldn't worry about it, Ella. We'll find out if you know him when they get here. You're awful smart, aren't you, Marshal? I wasn't signaling to nobody, neither. He's just trying to put the fire out. Sure. Huh. There's some horses coming up outside, Mr. Dillon. Huh? It's too dark to tell, but I think there's two of them. All right, Chester. Come on. You and I'll wait in the kitchen. I sure wish I had my gun, Marshal. No, Obi. Not I would have seen to it you weren't armed. And we'll have them covered, so don't worry. You're making a big mistake, Marshal. Never mind that, Ella. You just remember what I told you. Give us away and your friends will die. They're not my friends! Come on, Chester. They're going to be some surprise, ain't they, Mr. Dillon? Well, I hope so, Chester. We'd better get back out of the light. There they come, Mr. Dillon. Shh. Be quiet now. Evening, Obi. Mitch, you remember Obi Tater? Sure. He looks better than when I last seen him, though. <laughs> Wait, you shouldn't be here. You're making a mistake. What? Shut up, Ella. It's He's going to give us away, Mr. Yeah, all right, heads up, Chester. All right, don't move, either one of you. What is this? Who are you? Get your hand away from that gun, Quaid. You're caught now, Quaid, you and Mitch both. He'll fix you. That's Marshal Dillon from Dodge. Marshal? Ellis has double-crossed us, Quaid. No, I didn't. I tried to tell you. You signaled we was to come in. You know nobody double-crosses me, Ella. Nobody. Don't do it, Quaid. <laughs> 
All right, Mitch. You're next. I got my hands up, Marshal. I ain't drawn. Quig shot her, Marshal. He done killed her. Just a... Get Mitch's gun. Yes, sir. Come on, give it to me. Get your hand away. Who'd think any man could be low enough to shoot a woman? She double-crossed him. That's why he did it. No, Mitch. Ella had nothing to do with the marshal being here. She signaled us to ride in tonight. That meant she'd given up and she was going away with us. Given up? The fella couldn't find his money, nobody could. You're nothing but an old liar, Obi Chater. You ain't got no money at all. A liar? I told everybody a thousand times I ain't got no money. It doesn't matter now, Obi. Chester, take Mitch outside and tie him up. Yes, sir. Come on, Mitch, outside. Get moving. All right. I'm going to use your own rope to tie you up with. All right. She's dead, Marshal. I'm sorry, Obi. I, I just wasn't fast enough. Mm, it wasn't your fault, Marshal. Mm, you know something? What, Obi? I was awful fond of her. Ruinous as she treated me. She was so doggone pretty. And I'd have told her she just acted like a wife should. That's all she had to do. Them other fellas could have killed me before I'd have told them. But I'd have told Ella. So what are you talking about, Obi? You'd have told Ella what? About my gold money. Your money? It's in the rain barrel outside, Marshal. A whole big sack full of gold double eagles. What? You mean you had that money all the time? Sure, it's true. But, uh, uh, you, you, you won't tell nobody, will you, Marshal? No, Obi, I... I won't tell anybody. Like I'm filtered? Like I'm king size? Then for you, this is it. King size L and M filters at the same low price as L and M regular. Both have the miracle tip for the effective filtration you need. Yes, it's the filter that counts. And L and M has the best. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine, a light and mild smoke. Buy L and M filters. Just what the doctor ordered. It's America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. Buy a cotton, king size, or regular. Both at the same low price. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kern, Virginia Gregg, Vic Perrin, and Barney Phillips. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Nine out of ten forest fires are started by carelessness. Obey the forest rules. Build fires only in approved locations after securing a permit. Be sure all cigarettes and matches are dead out. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. And remember, too, next week at this same time, Chesterfield will bring you another transcribed story of the western frontier on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.